Okay, uh, so if you are here for children and families programming, you're in the wrong screen. That's next door. But here, I'm going to welcome to the stage Eleanor for the Calling All Members panel. Hi, everyone. Uh, last one before lunch. I think we can get through it. Um, and hello to everyone at home or at work or wherever you're watching online. Um, I'm Eleanor Thornley. I am the manager of Film Hub Midlands based at the Broadway Cinema in Nottingham. Um, I, for descriptive purposes, I am a short white woman with bleached and brown hair, red lips and a white sweatshirt. Um, and I am joined today um, by my guests who I'll allow to introduce themselves in a second to talk about subscription models. We think about the business of culture, the joy of film, how we can encourage people back, how we can strengthen our businesses, all of those things. And we're going to hear about a very exciting and inspiring membership scheme in the Netherlands um, and also how that might work here in the UK. Um, there'll be time for questions via Slido. Um, I'll be asking some questions as well, but we want to hear from you as everyone else has said today. So please do throw some questions to this panel uh, who I will now allow to introduce themselves. Thanks. So hi, my name is Thomas Hassemann. I'm from, I'm the head of Cineville in the Netherlands. I'm a white man. I'm 36 years old. I also have to <laughs> think a bit. Um, I have dark blonde hair and I'm wearing a blue overshirt and a white t-shirt. Um, my name is Ian Wilde. I'm from the showroom cinema in Sheffield, the Porter Green Art Cinema. Um, I'm a middle-aged white man wearing a gray shirt and uh, not much hair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think we're going to kick off. Uh, Thomas has got a presentation, for, um, so I think that would be a really w great way to start and give everybody a really good overview of what Cineville is and what Cineville does. So, thank you for inviting me. Um, as I said, I am one of the founders of Cineville in the Netherlands, and I'm going to explain a bit about what Cineville is, what we do, and what the results are in the Netherlands, and then we can discuss, hopefully, the, um, how that may be applicable to the situation in the UK. And to explain Cineville, oops, <laughs> this way, yeah. We have to start at the beginning, and this is Criterion. And this is a cinema that's completely run by students. It's in the center of Amsterdam. And it's right across the University of Amsterdam. And um, although it might not look like it, it has a very popular bar that's open all day. So during the day, a lot of students come in, have a coffee in the evening, have a beer. Um, but it also has three screens next door. And what we noticed when we were programming the cinema was that a lot of a lot of the people that came into this, to the bar never uh, went to the cinema next door. And um, yeah, we were kind of baffled why that was so we just asked them and the response we got most of the time was that a lot of the students didn't really feel like the cinema was for them they thought we sh we showed these difficult tedious movies um they didn't really like like art house it was more for their parents so they came into the bar and then they went to the multiplex to watch a film and um we we kind of thought that this was the problem at most of the cinemas in Amsterdam. There were 13 independent cinemas in Amsterdam at the time, so we went to them, had a discussion, and what we heard was that a lot of the cinemas, um, their average age was increasing every year by a year. So basically their audience was growing older and older and older, um, and not, not a lot of young people were coming into the cinema anymore. I'll do it again. So um, the problem we encountered was that um, art house became less attractive for younger people and were mostly visited by older people. And smaller titles were also losing market share. And that's something we see now, of course, as well. So this is the problem we wanted to solve. Yeah. So the solution we thought of was to work together as independent cinemas, to collaborate instead of compete. Um, we wanted to change the image of art house cinema and film and attract younger audiences. Um, this was the campaign with which we launched Cineville in 2009. As you can see, these were all the, uh, the cinemas we worked with. Uh, we actually built their cinemas in carton and we presented them to the audience like now we are um, a collaboration, we are a network of cinemas. And now in 2022, we have 60 cinemas that are part of the Cineville network in the Netherlands. We have, actually we have 60,000 members uh, as of yesterday. And on average, or together they visit the, visit the cinema 1.5 million times a year. So 
what is Cineville and what are the building blocks to start a subscription or a community like this? I think there are four elements that are important. Um, first of all, it's a network of cinemas. We don't have like the, the film hub uh, networks that you do in the UK, but we have started our own uh, network and we have 60 cinemas now all over the country from, of course, in Amsterdam and Rotterdam uh, are the most cinemas are, are there. But we also have cinemas in Groningen in the north and then the actual south in Maastricht. So we try to work together as an inter industry, not just cinemas, but we also work with dis distribution, film festivals, and we try to work together um, for marketing and uh, attracting audiences. What is important to note is that the cinemas collectively are the owners of Cineville. So we started Cineville, but basically they just hire me and my, my colleagues to do the work for them, but they are the owners. So they own the subscribers, the data, the revenue. There's a Cineville association in the Netherlands and to collectively they are the owner of Cineville. And that was really important for us because we came from a cinema and then we didn't want to be like, a, uh, like Facebook or Meta taking away the relationship with your customer and then locking it up for you. So um, I'll show also that it has been like a stimulus for investment in the art house sector. So actually new buildings and new cinemas are opening up every year because we work together and the audiences uh, are growing. Just to give you an idea uh, of the kind of cinemas we work with, this is probably the most famous cinema, uh, uh, art house cinema in the Netherlands, this I Film Museum in Amsterdam. Um, it, I think it has four screens, it has a, a library, uh, um, gallery space, a restaurant. But just as important for us is FC Hyena, which is actually next door. Uh, it's also in the north of Amsterdam. And it's actually a really popular wine bar uh, that also serves food. And it has two screens. And it's very popular for young people that come in, have a drink and watch a movie. And they have these couches. Um, so these are two cinemas in Amsterdam. Then these are, this is probably our smallest cinema. And uh, this is in Enkhuizen. Um, this used to be like a gate for the uh, harbor of Enkhuizen. And it has like 15 seats, I think. It's very small and it has one screening a day, but it's really cute. And this is, might be the biggest cinema. It's like a spaceship has landed in Groningen in the north. Uh, it's a very big building, but it has uh, four screens, concert halls, a museum, two restaurants, uh, and it's also part of Cineville. And these are two of our newest members. They just opened up this year, actually. So Rialto Vu, uh, that's the Vu University in Amsterdam. Um, they have four screens. And this is the film Koepel in Haarlem. Used to be like a, a prison, a dome prison. And in the basement, they uh, opened up a cinema, which has seven screens. And this is as close as it gets to like a cinema chain. We don't really have art house cinema chain. We don't really have that in the Netherlands, but they have now. This is their third cinema. So, um, yeah. So, network of cinemas. Then, of course, it's a brand and marketing tool. And as I explained, we try to act, uh, change the image of art house and attract younger audience. And how we do that is that by we use a lot of campaigns, outdoor campaigns, social media campaigns. Um, we organize events. Uh, we go to events as well um, to try to change how people perceive art house. And our website and our app is really important in that regard. So. Um, we, are, we have a, a content team of five people, young people, that write about film, talk about film as they would like, uh, as they would with their friends. So what we noticed is that, uh, of course, there's uh, a lot of articles and journalism happening in newspapers. But for young people, um, we were missing a kind of discussion about film from their perspective. So we talk about film um, from their perspective, like how they would... Um, um, no, I can't come up to the word, but um, I'll show you. Like, for example, this is our YouTube channel. So we focus on the visitor and their experience and how they perceive film. So we don't focus on the films, we focus on the visitors. And um, some of these are uh, famous people, but a lot of them are just uh, part of the audience. And we try to interview them. What kind of movies do you like? Why do you go to the cinema? Why is cinema important for you? And we get, try to give them a voice. Then there's the community that's um, around 60,000 people now in the Netherlands. So what we try to build is a community of the most loyal visitors. These are the people that go to the cinema maybe 30 times a year, almost two and a half times a month. And we try to bring them together and make them feel like they are part of a community. And that's really working well. So 
Um, we go to a lot of events to attract young people. This is, for example, one of the most uh, popular music festivals in Amsterdam. And we go there and we meet young people and we try to um, bring them over to our little stand. This was like a, a film studio that we brought to the festival. And having a Cineville card in the Netherlands is really being part of this community. And um, there's a lot of memes going on in the Netherlands when you have a Cineville, like about having a Cineville card and being a part of, uh, of the community. And it's something people are really proud of to have to show your cards. So we also invest a lot in, in events, of course, to bring people together, uh, special screenings for our members, um, interviews, etc. But also we have our own merchandise. And these are my colleagues. Um, so you can have T-shirts, bags, etc., to show that you are a Cineville member and uh, that is important to you. And just to show how important the community is um, during COVID, um, cinemas were closed multiple times where at once they were closed for six months in the Netherlands and people continue to pay for the subscription almost 70% of the members did that so we offered an online viewing platform but um, we got so many responses of the audience like I want to continue to support my cinema um, and they continue to pay for the subscription and um, yeah that was really helpful for the cinemas that were part of Cineville and uh, yeah that helped them a lot we don't have a lot of time, so I'm, I'm going really quick. I have, yes. Um, then, of course, there's the subscription, the unlimited card. And it's a monthly subscription. It's 21 euros a month, and we have a, a discount price for students and almost 60,000 members. And just to show you how we've grown over the years, so we started in 2009, and now we are over here. Um, and we are still growing because before COVID, we had around 50,000 members and now we have 60,000. So we are still growing and um, like the community, they are our ambassadors because you, you get a subscription and people go to the cinema. They go alone a lot of the time, but they also bring friends and then your friend sees, oh, yeah, this is quite interesting. Let me buy a card as well. And then they bring their friends. So it's growing all the time and it's really working well in that regard. And of course, this is our most important graph to show. Um, this is the age distribution of our members. Um, and I'd like to, maybe this is the back of a camel. Uh, so we have two humps <laughs> and the biggest humps, biggest hump is um, the average, average age is 25 years old. So um, of course, we also have older members, um, but we focus on the young audience to attract them. And then, of course, people are attracted to a, a young brand, uh, even when you're older. Between 35 and 50, we don't have that many members. Of course, people get kids, have job obligations, so uh, they don't have time to visit the cinema as much. So um, we focus on the youngest audiences. OK. So they go more often to the cinema. That's one of the most important results. On average, they go two and a half times a month, and that's 30 times a year. And we did a research study uh, two years ago that said that 87% of the members visit the cinemas more often than before. And what is maybe our the result we are most proud of is that they experiment a lot more as well. Because you have like this, this card, so you can go to any movie you'd like and just try out new things and see what's showing in a cinema and just try out something uh, you're interested in and if it isn't if it's not um, working for you then you visit another movie next time it's, it's more or less like going to a festival we work in cinema so you go to a festival and just go in and out of screenings all the time just to try out new movies and it's not um, it lowers the thresholds to go to a movie because there's no financial uh, uh, payment to make I gave this presentation with Rialto, the uh, Raymond Balraf, he's the owner of Rialto Cinema in Amsterdam. So um, just to focus a little bit on what the results are for him as a cinema owner. Um, again, um, they have an increase in both younger audiences and older audiences, and also smaller titles have seen a big increase in audiences. Um, and it also extends the life cycle of smaller titles. And it also works really well for festivals, for special events, because these are the kind of events that Cineville members go to the most. So like Q&As, premieres, but also um, like one of the most uh, popular cinemas in Amsterdam now is Lab uh, 111. And, and they just show classics all the time, uh, retrospectives. 
And for young people, this is the place they go to just to watch older movies on the big screen again. And it's super popular. And uh, the Cineville membership really works well for these kind of uh, programs. Um, these are some of the results of Rialto um, before and during COVID. So on the left, you see the total amount of visitors in Rialto, which of course um, have gone down dramatically during COVID. We were closed for, or I have to say, we were open for four months only in 2021. Um, but as you can see, the percentage of senior villers, um have gone up quite a while. So it was 40% before COVID and during COVID, and even now after COVID, almost 50% of the visitors have a Cineville membership. So they are the first ones to come back and the first ones to bring their friends again to the cinema. Just to give you some perspective, I'm not really sure how it is in the UK, but we saw that in Germany and France uh, in the first half of this year, there, were, there was 68% of the visits before COVID and in the Netherlands, in the Cineville cinemas, we had 76%. And Cineville, we saw that the, the, the audience came back around 86% of pre-COVID levels. So it really helps to, um, yeah, to get the numbers up again after the pandemic. Financial model, if I have time. Briefly. Briefly, yes. Just to explain, um, so 10 to 15% of the card's revenue is used for, for the expenses, for the organization, and 85 to 90% goes to the, uh, to the cinemas and uh, to the distributors. Um, how we work is that we pay a fixed ticket price per visit. We calculate it per year. And um, every time someone visits the cinema, the, the cinema is paid out a, a fixed price. Um, no, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, the distributor just gets its regular share of the uh, of the ticketing revenue, revenue. And what we do is we work completely transparent. So we share all our numbers with distributors and also producers just to show what's happening, wh how the ticket price is calculated, how many visitors are going to the cinema. So it's completely transparent from them and that was important to get them on board as well. Uh, we do have other memberships and subscriptions in the Netherlands that don't do this and it has been really beneficial for us to, to work with them and uh, be completely transparent, transparent about what's happening. Of course, we also share a lot of data. Um, so we have dashboard for cinemas and for distributors that they can look, uh, uh, they have a daily dashboard to see what kind of people are in their cinema, what kind of people went to their film. And um, actually we can, we're kind of building a, a trail of watching the first trailer on our website, knowing what kind of people are interested, what kind of people have went to the cinema, what the, the, we actually, ask them for a vote after they went to the cinema. So we have like this full trail uh, until the, uh, maybe the VOD release that we know what kind of people are watching, what kind of movies. And that's really helpful for them to, uh, for their marketing. To finish up, we are now trying to uh, connect not only cinemas on a local level or a national level, but on a European level. So we, uh, we work with cinemas in Belgium and in Austria. They've started their own local subscription and we help them sharing knowledge and experience to uh, yeah, eventually hopefully set up a European-wide subscription or a card that you can visit any cinema at any time in any country. That would be, uh, that would be a great result uh, in a couple of years. So. This is Cineville in very short time. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Um, it was quite a lot to take in, but really exciting. Uh, and um, also just love looking at pictures of cinemas. So that was great. Um, Ian, I know that you've been thinking a little bit about this for a while and how this could work in the UK or what that could look like. So I don't know your initial thoughts on um, what you wanted to share with the, the room. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen Thomas do that presentation a few times now, and I'm always incredibly blown away by it. Uh, I think it kind of, I find it quite inspiring. Um, I, I wanted to sort of try and reflect on some of the things Thomas said, and maybe um, think about what a UK version of Cineville might look like, and maybe raise a few questions, um, and then hopefully get some feedback from, from you about what you, you think about it, and if you think it would work in the UK. Um, I want to start by saying I first um, came across Cineville at a Europa Cinemas conference in Lisbon in 2019, 
um, it, and it, uh, some exhibitors from Amsterdam were on a panel and presented their version of Cityville. And I was incredibly impressed because it seemed to provide a lot of solutions for problems I was dealing with in running a, a, a cinema in the UK. Notably, um, I felt we were losing market share to subscription services that were being offered by Cineworld and other uh, chains. And also the issue of how you engage with young audiences in better ways. So it, it felt to me like it was potentially providing some answers to, to some problems that, that we have. Um, and talking to other exhibitors after that presentation, I think everybody felt the same. I, I think there was a feeling that this was something that would work in the UK. And you know, could we make it happen? Um, and after that conference, I started talking to a few people. We had a meeting with the BFI um, and started to put together some thoughts about how it might, might happen or might work. And then, of course, COVID happened. So that was the end of that for 18 months. Um, so if you kind of now jump forward 18 months to about this time last year, um, we started to revive those conversations and to sort of reach out to, uh, to a few exhibitors that we knew to ask would they be st still be interested in, in being part of a, a sort of UK version. Uh, we had a Zoom call, Thomas was kind enough to join us on the call. And there was quite a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we followed that up with a, a questionnaire where we even asked, would you be, pre be prepared to put a bit of money in up front? And remarkably, everyone said yes, or most people said yes. So that was quite encouraging. And then I um, also had some conversations with the UK Cinema Association. So Phil Clapp um, invited me to speak at one of the regional conferences, uh, which I did. And um, I think quite remarkably, I got a, a lot of um, very positive responses after that from uh, commercial independents saying, we really want something like this to happen in the UK. We, and, Usually for financial reasons, you know, they felt they were losing market share to uh, to the uh, circuits uh, and their subscription services. So it kind of said to me that you know there there is a a need or hunger for this in 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 Britain. Um, so it's worth reflecting on what what we what we know so far. Um, I know there's a lot of interest, and I know a lot of that is driven through uh, competition from losing market share. Um, a lot of people are quite nervous about it. There's quite a lot of reticence because there's a fear that it might cut across existing membership schemes. Um, so I think that's a question we need to, to think about and address. Um, and also, we don't really have much of a track record of working together in the UK. We, we talk a lot, um, but do we work together very well? And so there's a bit of nervousness there as well. Um, in trying to think about what something like Cineville would look like in the UK, and obviously taking a lot of lessons from uh, Thomas's experience in the Netherlands. Um, I think we all, or everyone I've spoken to, likes the idea of it being owned by the exhibitors, that it's, um, it's a, probably a new company that we all set up together, that we have one member, one vote, if you like, and that that company would employ a, an operating, an operator on a, contract to deliver the service. Um, I think we'd like to see it investing in marketing. That's really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark Cosgrove, by the way. Um, yeah, so um, I think we'd like to see investing in marketing as you know, to, to build membership and also to support independent cinema, independent film, which is the type of films we want to show. And I think one question we, we need to ask is, you know, if we start a scheme, are we going to set any quotas? Or do cinemas need to have a, a certain number of independent films? Are we just opening, are we, will we open it up to everyone? Will maybe cinemas just want to show Avatar, something like that? And that's a question. I don't have the answer to that. Um, and in terms of pricing, looking at um, different subscription models in the UK, I mean, I think the main one is the Cineworld card, which has a variable price band. In Sheffield, um, they charge £15.99 a month, so £16 a month. Um, the Light card is the same price. Odeon charge a pound less, so they're £14.99 a month. 
Um, and you know we need to be in the same price band as, as them. And again, looking at the overheads, if we can keep the overheads to, as Thomas said, between 10 and 15 percent um, for admin and marketing. Obviously, the more people you have in the scheme, the more you have to spend on admin and marketing. Um, but but then the main issue is is how much do we pay to the to the cinemas and to the distributors? And I'm very well aware that there's an overdue conversation with the film distributors about that. Um, in trying to put together a, a sort of a business model, a business case, uh, we've tried to work out what setup costs would be needed. Uh, speaking to other people, the, the group of exhibitors in Belgium who have set up a similar scheme in Brussels and tried to do some rough and ready costs. Um, it kind of works out as a minimum, we probably need about £150,000 setup costs. If we can raise more, that de risks it to a certain extent. Um, and I think the key risk initially is probably that the early adopters are going to be high cinema users. So that two and a half times a month that uh, people use the card for might, might be quite low in the early stages of the scheme and that could very easily eat the cash. So we need to think about um, pricing quite carefully. Um, and then another question, and again, I'm going to ask this question as well. Um, advice seems to be that we're better off um, launching the scheme in a small way with a maybe in a city with lots of cinemas who could join which in the UK would probably mean launching it in London um, to be honest I haven't had a great deal of engagement with the London independents maybe there are people here who want to sort of talk about that but I personally don't want to wait a couple of years for it to be successful in London and then to roll out to the country. I want it to happen now in my city. So I think we need to look at how we how we launch it. I'm just curious. Um, oh, okay. Concerned about time. Well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll probably best if we wind it up there. I was going to start okay. banging on about funding, but maybe that's, that's a <laughs> co conversation for later. I'll, I'll just say, though, that, that one of the things I'd like to get after this is if anybody is interested to maybe set up a small working group for us to work out how we can progress this to the next stage. But maybe this is a good time to throw it open to questions. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Ian. And um, I know that you'll be keen to talk to people here at various lunches and etc. Um, and, you know, drinks. Um, uh, and obviously people at home online, I'm sure there are ways that we can get them in touch with you as well if they're not here today. Um, so, Sally, do we have questions from the room? Yeah, we do. And, um... There are quite a few. So it might also be a suggestion, Ian, if maybe we could treat that as sort of like an FAQ that we could circulate afterwards as well, because there's some quite specific questions that are really interesting. Uh, there is a suggestion about whether it would work localised, so maybe through one of the film hubs as a test model. Um, and there's a question around, how does the fixed price that you had on the screen there, Thomas, compare to the average cinema ticket price in the Netherlands? And how did distributors react to the scheme? Mm -hmm. Um, so on average, the ticket price in the Netherlands is about 10 euros. So we have a ticket price that's now 780, a little bit less in the presentation, but so it's maybe 75 to 80% of the uh, average ticket price in the cinema. And distributors, yeah, of course, they, they knew the model from other, um, from the multiplexes in the Netherlands, but we completely changed their view on on, on, on subscriptions by being transparent and sharing our numbers and like we said like we're gonna try out this for a year um, we'll start with a very low ticket price but we have we don't have any clue uh, how often people will go in the beginning and in the beginning they went around four times a month so we had to pay a really low ticket price but we said let's try it out for a year we share our numbers and if it doesn't work out then also for the cinemas and exhibitors it's if it's not working for them then it won't work for you as well so any other way other way around so uh yeah we we, we got them on board through transparency and uh and making it making it like a test run for for first year and how does it work in relation to um other venues membership schemes so most or a lot of the um of the venues have their own membership which is maybe a bit smaller than the memberships in the uk so it's like uh, maybe 20 euros a year and you get discounts on drinks and actually we've seen that um venues could still keep their own uh, membership um, people are more than happy to support their local venue their local uh, cinema and then next to that 
uh, get a subscription because they just want to come as often to as many places as they can. So we've seen that um, both can be combined, actually. Yeah. So the, the, the localized membership schemes were really focusing on sort of commercial revenue in terms of drinks and food and discounts there, as opposed to the, were they also still doing their own cheaper tickets? Yeah. Um, you get a little bit of a discount. It's more okay. about maybe getting like a folder and a newsletter and supporting your cinema than, than actually be a discount for the customer. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you find that audiences do go to multiple cinemas or are they just loyal to that one <laughs> cinema and use the Cineville card there? No, they do go to a lot of cinemas. Um, of course, Amsterdam is really small, so every cinema is just a 15-minute bike ride away. Um, but on average, we see that they have maybe two or three um, cinemas they go to most often, but they also go to cinemas all across the country. And uh, I think, like for example, in Amsterdam, 20% of the Cineville visits come from other places, from people that live in other places, and the other way around. So, uh, of course, people live in one place and work in another, have friends in another place, and you just travel around and, uh, yeah, visit maybe 10 cinemas a year. Um, I'm going flying through. Is that okay, Elna? Yeah, keep go going. Ahead. Um, did you receive any government funding to start up the project? No. Uh, no. No. Uh, we received a, a little bit of an investment from the cinemas themselves, and we started really small, and, yeah. Um, and how does, it, how does it work with festivals, or is that the relationship that the venue has with the festival? No, we collaborate with festivals, not with the biggest festivals like ITFA, but there are some other smaller festivals. And um, we, tr we try to include as much of the program at the venues as possible. So also festivals, uh, like smaller festivals organized by the venues themselves or uh, external festivals. We try to include, include as much as possible and work on marketing together and work on getting the audience to the festival. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, another couple I reckon we can squeeze in if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, it's a really popular one, lots of interesting questions here. Um, does a scheme like Cinevel jeopardize local jobs and cinemas in terms of marketing, development and management by having that centralized service? No, I haven't seen that. No, no. So most of the cinemas, they in the Netherlands at least, they have maybe one person working on marketing, so they have a lot to do and a lot on their hands. So uh, yeah, actually try to collaborate with them uh, yeah, it's been working out really well, and, and we haven't seen any job cuts or anything, no. One more, okay. Um, there's, there's so many to choose from. Um, we've got had requests for sharing the slides. Thomas, would that be okay if we can share those as well sure. as some of these questions? Um, I guess maybe a question for Ian here. It's um, Cineville looks very cool, which it does. <laughs> uh, for a UK version, what is the actual problem we're trying to solve? Is it the frequency of attendees? Is it specific audiences, new audiences? What is that one thing we're trying to solve by this suggestion? Um, from conversation with various exhibitors, there's, there's a feeling that some of the independents are losing market share to subscription services that have been, been offered by um, the chains. Um, and also, the need to continue to renew our audience and to attract younger people back to the cinema. Um, I think that's, that's, that's the key issue. And I, I know lots of people have looked at starting their own standalone schemes, but financially it's quite difficult and quite risky. So the idea of working collectively to, to do that sort of takes away some of that risk and um, I think makes it more attractive if you've got a national scheme as well. Great, thank you. There are lots more, and, and don't worry, we'll gather them all, and we'll try and give some, we'll give some thought to them, because the idea of this is also to gather your thoughts so that we can build it into a working group. But I think that's probably all we have time for. Thank can you. I just add to yes. One yes, please do. Because if you want if the goal is to attract young people, I would really advise also to hire young people for the <laughs> company to do. Because <laughs> otherwise, uh, like even last week, I had a discussion with my colleague, head of marketing. She's thirty-five. But if you are active on social media and you want to attract younger audiences, then you really need young persons to to communicate in their own way. And for us. Um, Every year, again, it's, it's, it's uh, a challenge because young people go to study for the first time in Amsterdam and they haven't really heard of the cinema. So we, every year, again, we have to convince them again and show them what's happening. So, uh, yeah, it's a continuing investment in attracting young people. Yeah, I think hiring young people with exciting voices is always a good uh, yes. notion anyway. Thank you very much for coming and for sharing. And I know that you'll be around for the rest of the day if you want to have further chats. And thanks, Ian, for your rallying cry to the UK cinema.
space. Um, Sally, I think you're going to do a bit of pre-lunch. Uh... I am, thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's lunchtime. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is lunch. So lunch is served uh, in the foyer where you have coffee and where the delegate badges are. You can eat your lunch. You can also go to the meeting room upstairs and have a sit down if you wanted to do that. The uh, BFI Network shorts will be in cinema too. You can take your lunch in. So grab some food, go and sit and watch some short films. Reminder that the VR is downstairs if you want to do that after you've grabbed a bite to eat and you can go out to do the Dundee Walk AR experience. If all of that was too much information, we're just going to be hanging around with our pink uh, lanyards on. So come and ask us what you can do at lunchtime. But the most important thing is, is upstairs and go and grab some food. Thank you. Thank you. For the